We uh, like to describe our technology as uh, something that uh, requires minutes to do what uh, Mother Nature otherwise requires millions or tens of millions of years to do. Important to this particular audience, however, is that uh, IH squared technology can be built very, very cost effectively within the confines of a, of a uh, refinery, an existing refinery. One of the issues that the conversion technology in the renewable space has is the feedstock availability and its price. The IS Square technology, it's uh, one of the unique attributes is its ability to convert a wide variety of feedstocks directly into the high quality hydrocarbon fuels and blend stocks. This allows the customer to avoid the seasonality and regionality issues of the feedstock and also enable them to have the economy of scale, ability to blend the feedstocks and make for a larger unit. In the renewable fuel space, of course, specifications are important. And we're very excited to share with you that in the United States, our product quality for both our gasoline product as well as our diesel product manufactured from wood actually meets the STM specifications for gasoline and diesel. Basically, you start with biomass. That biomass can be just about anything. It can vary from day to day. As long as you can feed it into the reactor, it will convert. So the first step of the process is to dry that material and size it. It enters into the lock hopper and now it enters into our first stage reactor. And the first stage reactor is a hydropyrolysis unit. It is a bubbling fluidized bed in which the, the biomass enters in the bottom and there's an upsweep of carrier gas, in this case hydrogen. Otherwise the gas phase components continue on to a fixed bed hydro treater and it's a traditional hydro treater, multi-bed hydro treater in design. Uh, this is where we remove residual oxygen from the first stage, nitrogen, sulfur, and adjust aromatics to meet fuel specifications. This then goes to three-phase separation in which we remove the light hydrocarbon gases, C3-, they're cleaned up and sent off to the SMR to make uh, renewable hydrogen. We also separate water, which is then cleaned up and then also fed to the SMR again. So all of the hydrogen that comes uh, from our process is in fact renewable. And then the uh, hydrocarbon phases uh, from gasoline, jet, and diesel spanning that particular range are sent off to, di to distillation and then further uh, specked out uh, in, the, in the final distillation process. So producing a liquid hydrocarbon fuel or blend stock is advantageous because it produces a very high BTU value liquid as opposed to oxygenated fuels. So it's very high in energy content. In addition to this, because it's a hydrocarbon, you can utilize existing infrastructure such as in refineries or pipelines in order to move the products around. The vehicle fleet in many countries is designed for liquid hydrocarbons predominantly as their primary component. So utilizing a hydrocarbon in a renewable space is advantageous because we can maintain the existing fuel fleet and engine operability. There are several ways that the I squared technology is valuable to refiners. The first of which is to integrate the technology along with existing fossil refinery assets in order to improve the economics of the process. For example, a fossil refinery has usually excess hydrogen available and as a result I don't need to build an SMR plant for my renewable fuel technology. And there are other fixed cost and uh, variable cost savings that can be realized and thereby getting overall lower cost of production. The second major way a refiner can help in the deployment of the IA squared technology is to take advantage of the fact that we produce a fungible hydrocarbon fuel which is indistinguishable from fossil fuels. That those refiners can take offtake agreements, develop offtake agreements, or actually implement them on site uh, in order to reduce their overall carbon footprint. At CRI, we're often asked how it is that we can be successful bringing this IH squared technology to market when so many others have failed at bringing new technology successfully through the commercialization process. And for us, it's really a function of three things. Uh, first and foremost, we've had lab scale operations underway since 2009. We have a pilot plant that's been operational for a couple of years now that has more than 4,000 hours of successful operation. And we're just entering into a phase where we will, are engineering and constructing the next scale, which is a demonstration unit. So there are no shortcuts in this process. Additionally, we have gone out and brought in experts, respected experts in very critical fields such as solids handling, solids feeding, and these are companies like KDR, GTI, Andritz, Thomas and & Mueller, and many others that are contributing to the overall success of the project. 
And lastly, it's critically important when you bring a new technology to market to bring in third parties for cold eye reviews to make sure that your designs are exactly as they should be, not, not just as you think they should be. So we've taken no shortcuts in bringing this technology to market and that is exactly how we'll be successful.